Good morning everyone, Nick here from Meat Smoke Fire for our 8th, 9th, 8th I think it is, Saturday night takeaway cook. Um, so hopefully you are all enjoying the series. Um, you seem to be, uh, we've had lots of requests and during the last week, the video of last week's show has been watched over 500 times I think. So uh, a lot, or 470 or something like that, plus all of you watching it last week. So that's brilliant, um, loving it. Um, so this week you requested Nando's, or in fact Jason requested Nando's in Sainsbury's. It was Jason, wasn't it? Yeah. God, oh, that's good. Requested Na Nando's in Sainsbury's the week before last. Um, so we're going to do some Nando's cooks today. We've got uh, three or four dishes, and I know I have forgotten one thing. Um, Helena, I've left the sweet corn inside. Okay. <laughs> Since they're in the fridge. Anyway, she'll go and grab that while we get going. So, um, yeah, so we've got three or four dishes today. Uh, we might do a fourth one depending on, depending on time. So we've got uh, Nando's chicken, you all want that. Uh, we have my version of Nando's rice, uh, which we've done twice this week and loved. One time it was just epic on a, uh, you know, extra scale. And I don't know what I did differently, but it just tasted even better than normal. So uh, anyway, we're going to do that, show you how that goes. Uh, we're going to do some corn on the cob uh, with a spicy dust to go with it. And if we get time and Helena, fight, no, I'm joking. Uh, if we get time, we'll do some, just some chips, <laughs> simple fries to go with it all. Because yeah, I know you get those in Nando's. So that's where we're at. Um, when Helena's back, um, what we'll do is do the usual. I'll do it What now. So um, we'll flip you around. So we have Andy on the camera, um, looking a little less uh, clothed than last week. Um, so those of you here were last week. Last week was Spain, Spanish tapas, and it was peeing it down with rain and freezing. So she was covered up in a coat, but this is normal Andy. Yep. This is how she liked to dress. <laughs> and then we've got Helena over here. Uh, so she's uh, taking, taking all your questions uh she'll be watching the feed morning annie i've just seen you pop up um so uh, she'll be taking down the questions and feel free to ask questions as we go through so that's helena um and my half mowed lawn if you can see my lawnmower packed up halfway through mowing this morning so uh yeah the, the hammock is to decide uh, disguise the side that isn't mowed <laughs> right so we're going to go for the first cook when you get it on we're going to do the whole lot live with this one so i have um here, cast iron skillet, big green eggs, cut, um, small cast iron skillet and big green eggs uh, plancher. Um, the plancher makes a perfect lid and it's got a little lip, it's designed to be a lid and it makes a perfect lid for the skillet so it turns it into a pan with a lid. Now any pan with the metal, uh, that's all metal, you could use but I'm going to use this today. So um, for this dish we're just going to put a little bit of uh, oil in a pan couple of tablespoons and then I'm going to get some onion in there so this is one chopped onion so we'll get that in you could pre-warm the pan I haven't because I wanted to pick it up and show you and then um, we are going to put in some chili and garlic sauce um, you can get this from uh, Amazon you can also get it from Asian supermarkets so uh, and I'm going to put about a teaspoon in don't go too heavy it's quite um, spicy so about a teaspoon of that in there. I'll just mix it all round. Oops, get on the floor. And we'll get that in the egg. Now this egg is, it's a little bit warm at the moment, but um, I've got a cold skillet in there. So I'm gonna pop that in and that's gonna start frying those down. And what you'll see is it will drag the temperature down a little bit. So ideally I want to be about 180 degrees centigrade. Um, so it's gonna pull that temperature down while that skillet um, heats up and then we'll just knock it down in a bit. So um, so all we're gonna do is fry those off and then we'll get all the other ingredients in there and get the lid on there. We'll get the rice in there to go with the softened onion uh, and so on. So that is gonna be our rice dish. Right, let's go here. So to go with our Nando's chicken, um, um, you could buy a piri piri sauce uh, you could go to Sainsbury's, Tesco's, wherever it is and buy the Nando's actual sauce. Um, but why not have a go at making your own? Um, so I have here um, some these fruity chilies, these uh, Amarillo chili, uh, chilies. They come from 
Peru, so almost Portugal, just across the water. Not quite, but anyway. Um, so we're going to use a couple of these Amarillo chilies. Now they're quite fruity, but they're quite spicy as well. Um, if you don't want the dish too spicy, if you don't want your chicken spicy, then when you cut these, you can take the seeds out and it'll be a lot less spicy. Um, you could substitute in any other chilies uh, for this, um, just to experiment with them. So bird's eye chilies, um, African bird's eye chilies are what piri piri sauce has in it. Um, I'm going to use these because I quite like them. Um, I got these from Amazon, um, a big pack for about 20 quid. So all I'm going to do is take these chilies and I'm going to chop the ends off. So I'm just going to whiz over to my board. Um, you can come over if you want, Andy. Well, I'm done now. But I've just taken those ends off. Um, and they're going to go in my blender. Okay. So into my blender, um, two chilies. Um, I'm going to put in two cloves of garlic. Okay, they're going in. I'm going to put in a good handful of coriander and I'll leave the stalks on. The stalks taste fabulous so they can all go in. Um, I've got some basil here uh, which we normally have growing in the kitchen. So I'm just going to take about 10 leaves, something like that, a few stalks so they can go in. Uh, we need the juice of a lime so I'm just going to go and chop this. Okay, so we've got our lime and I've just got a squeezer. Uh, I did promise to put this up on the page the other day, didn't I? So I must do it. So we'll squeeze the lime in. Get that in there, so a whole juice of the lime. Oops. And then to um, break it down a bit, I'm gonna put about six, eight tablespoons of oil. Perfect. Right, lid on and we'll just give that a blitz. Now we want this to be quite chunky, um, so not a, a paste. So I'll give it a blitz and then I'll push it down with my spoon. Come on, open. Okay, maybe a bit more oil and you might wanna, I'll show you, I'll get Andy to have a look in there after I've done this. Okay, and I haven't put any salt and pepper in yet, so I'll just do that. Um, there is smoke coming past, we've already got something cooking, so uh, don't worry about that. Uh, salt and pepper are oh. here. Let's put my bit of pepper, a bit of salt. Just going to push them down again, make sure it forms a nice chunky paste. Right Andy, do you want to come and have a quick look in this when the lid opens? Hang on. There we go, there we go. Okay, so that is my green Nando sauce. Um, if you wanted to turn it a bit more yellow like uh, the Nando sauces are, put some turmeric in there. Um, that will make it yellow, but uh, it will also turn your bowl yellow. Um, so, right. So we've got that in. Perfect. Right, we'll take that over. But what I did promise to do was give you a quick butchery lesson on how to spatchcock a chicken. So, I have my usual supermarket chicken. Just going to take out the packet. Are there any questions or no, not yet. any anyone we want to shout out who's come on that we recognise? Uh, Mar Marcus is on. Marcus. Borden. Hi, Marcus. Down Sue. in Devon. Nice Susan. to have you on. Susan Stoneham. Stoneham, yeah. Yeah. Hi, Susan. On as well. De another Devon. There's a lot of Devon going on. Mark from Dutchy Charcuterie. Oh wow, Mark's on. Hi, Mark. Good to have you on. That's Weather's the first. not good in Devon and Cornwall. <clears throat> Weather's fantastic here, Mark, unfortunately. So Mark, um, at Dutchy, I hope I'm saying that right. That's how I say it. Dutchy Charcuterie um, does some excellent salamis and endusia and 
uh, and all sorts. We had a, um, a friend of mine, Simon Margerison, down the road. Margerison, I'll get it right. Uh, down the road, uh, gave me a, one of his boxes for my 50th a couple of weeks ago. So uh, um, had all sorts of lovely things in it. So it was a fabulous treat. Anyway, right. So uh, so chicken. Um, I've got it the normal way up. What we're going to do is just spatchcock it. So make it really easy. Just flip it over. I'm just taking the wings out of the way. Get a decent pair of scissors and going down your chicken, you've got a, a backbone. So um, all I'm going to use here, if you can look in the opening at the back, put the scissors in. And all I'm doing is cutting down either side of that backbone. done. Um, what I'll do then is flip it over and use the heel of my hand to push down on it and that is it. That is one spatched cock chicken. So ready to cook. The point of doing that is it will cook so much faster than if you left it whole. If you left it whole it's going to be an hour and 15 minutes. If you do that to it you can now grill it and it's going to take you 40, 45 minutes, something like that and it will cook so much faster. Um, it's also how they do them in Nando's. What they do is cut it down the middle. Maybe we'll do that. I've done this before. So um, just get in with your knife. Straight down the middle. And then if you go to Nando's, that is half your chicken. Yeah. And what we're going to do with this, I'm going to score the skin. Get a nice score in there. I'll score the thighs as well. Do the same on the other one. Yeah, this is a nice sharp knife. Get that in there. I'm going to pop that in the bin as I go and get my tray. So stay there, Andy. And now comes the messy part where we pop this on. And we can put our Nando's style. Mine's green, but that's because it's the way I like it. Get that on. Nice and herby, nice and spicy. I'll get my fingers all over this in a minute and get it rubbed in. Now, ideally, you want to leave this in the fridge overnight to, to marinate, uh, to get all of that loveliness into the chicken. Make sure you push it into those uh, slots, get that right in there. Uh, we're not going to get to do that with this one, um, obviously. So there we go, one nice chicken. I'm just going to wash my hands. You can follow me over, Andy. Uh, are there any questions? No, no, no. Oh, you're all quiet today. Anyone else on that we know? Uh, Carlos. Hi, Carlos. Paul. Paul White. Yeah. Another Devon. It's the Devon takeover this morning. Uh, Sue Tucker. Sue Tucker from yeah. Hunting St. Ives. Yeah, uh, I know. I think she's all boys, okay. Uh, well, uh, Jason. Jason, all the way from sunny, I want to say Fallbourne, I don't know. Uh, yeah. John Pritchard in Norfolk. John Pritchard in Norfolk. Hi John, I see you walking your dog every day up and down the beach at Cromer, love it. Anyway, right, so um, what we had there, chicken, um, oh, I'll come back and I'll show you. So we've, I've done one of those, I've got it in, I've got it cooking, so we'll open it up, show you. Um, so this is one we made last night. Um, I put it on about 20 minutes beforehand. Um, what I have done this week is I am using uh, a meter. So if you look, there's a, a temperature probe stuck in there, uh, just here. Um, it's connected to this block here, if you can see that, Andy. And then on, uh, I've just got, I've just turned it off, brilliant. Hang on a sec. Uh, on my, it's just a cheap Amazon tablet, I've got the app. And what it's showing, um, if I click on it as well, is I've set it up to tell it we're cooking chicken. So it's set it to a target of 74 degrees. That's when chicken's ready. Uh, it's currently at 33 degrees. Uh, the egg is at 151, but that's because I've got the lid open. It's dropping, you can see. And we've got about 27 minutes remaining. So we should serve this uh, as we finish the class, which is ideally what we want. So um, what I will do with that chicken, I'm cooking it for the first 25 minutes uh, bone side down and then I'm going to flip it over uh, if that makes sense and then the other bits that we've just marinated I'll do those 
uh, I will put those on and we'll cook those after the class. Right, let's come back to this. So in our skillet, we have softening up those uh, onions. So all we've got in there at the moment is that onion and that chili and uh, garlic and chili paste. Probably shouldn't bang that while I'm talking to you. So what I'm gonna to add to that, a little bit of turmeric. So um, uh, Nando's rice, that lovely bright yellow color, it comes from turmeric. So you can see it's a beautiful turmeric. So I'm gonna do about half a teaspoon, get it in there and um, wipe, get, mix that in so it colors as well. Yeah. So the chicken, we are cooking at, at 180 degrees on the egg. Uh, so the question was, what are we doing with the chicken? Is it direct, indirect, what temperature? So the chicken is on there at 180 degrees. So if Andy went and looked at the thermometer, it will show you it's 180, roughly, degrees C. It's a direct cook, so all I'm using is a stainless steel grid. Exactly the same in this one. So if you want to look at that, Andy, you can see straight into the charcoal. I've got the pan just sitting directly above the charcoal. This is a direct cook, or uh, sort of, because we've got a pan, but that one definitely is. Um, and we're cooking the chicken until it gets to 74 degrees. Now the meter is a brilliant big kit. What it will do is it will, it will um, judge when you can take it off before 74, so that by the time the outside temperature has equalized with the inside temperature, it's 74 degrees all the way through. Okay. So it'll tell you when to rest it. Quick question on the meter. Yeah. Does it warn you if the temperature of the egg is off? If the egg is off, yes, you can set alarms on it to warn you when the temperature is too high on your cook, when you, uh, of the egg is too high, too low. Um, you can set that the meat temperature gets too high, too low. Uh, you can tell it to warn you 15, 20 minutes before the end of the cook from its estimations. There are all sorts of alarms you can set. By default, it sets itself up just to warn you five minutes before the end of the cook. So we'll probably hear it beeping uh, when we're getting towards that point. Okay, so, right, this, let's get back in, softening up nicely. So now what I want to do is get the rice in there. So I have a pretty much a full cup of rice, uh, a mug of rice in this case, that all goes in. And all I'm gonna do is stir that. Now I wanna coat that with the oil. I wanna coat that with the turmeric, but I don't wanna cook it. Um, if you cook it, um, as you do in some dishes like paella, uh, paella um, what you're doing is splitting those rice um, uh, grains and that allows the water in. Now we don't wanna do that in this. We just want it to soak normally. So all I'm doing is getting those nicely uh, coated and then I'm gonna add some stock to it. Now I've got little stock pots today. Normally I would use, um, uh, if I can get the buggers open. Um, normally I'd use that liquid stock um, from Nor. I love that stuff, but I couldn't get any yesterday. We're not completely out of uh, lockdown yet, obviously. Things are still short on the shelves. Um, so I'm gonna use a couple of these. Nice and, um, uh, nice amount of chicken. I'm even using chicken, by the way. Nice amount of chicken flavor going in there. Um, and we'll get those, mix them in, just warm them up, they'll start to melt, get them mixed in with that rice. So, so far we've just got garlic, chilli from that paste, we've got a bit of turmeric, we've got a bit of stock and the rice. And what I need to do now is just get some water for that, so I'm going to get my mug. Now, when you're cooking rice, one part rice, two parts water, and a lid is the perfect combination. So this is just cold water going in. Um, it will start to melt that stock through. I'm gonna stir it, and then I'm gonna get that lid on. Now, people may ask me, why do it on the egg? Um, it's because it gets a lovely crispy base. And we're going to take this off at the end as well. So we'll pop that lid on, close this lid, and that's now cooking nicely. That will start to warm that up. It's going to take about 15 minutes uh, for that, uh, for the rice to, to soak up that water. For the last few minutes, we'll take the lid off. It'll get some of that smoky flavour in there. Um, now, if you were just doing it on one egg, 
and I could have done this all on one egg, I should have done, um, but the way I did it during the week is I put the extra layer in there using the expander system and I let all those chicken juices then drip down onto the rice as we cooked it. So we could do that later, I could show you that later. But for now, we'll just get that cooking. Yeah. Is there any difference between... Can you talk louder? Is there any difference between the half moon griddle for the expander and the standard one? So can you use it without the expander? Yeah, so uh, I've got one of each of those. It says, uh, there's the one. There is a half moon griddle for an expander. I'm gonna get my hands filthy now. Uh, but you can see it's got some cutouts. Uh, that makes it fit into the expander system a lot better. Um, the old style one, uh, which is in one of these cupboards, I think. Let me just see if I've got one quickly to hand. Uh, I'm gonna dive behind you, Andy. I don't think it's over on my surface tree. old style one you'll see doesn't have those cutouts and so it doesn't fit around the handle it has to sort of sit halfway over but it'll still work with the expander system that is particularly nasty and dirty um, but um, if you've got the expander system and you've got one of these work with it if you haven't got one then I suggest I wouldn't suggest buying one of these um, now I would just get the expander system even if you haven't the, the rack for the expander plancher for the expander system and then if you ever buy that later on, then you can, uh, you can use it with it. Otherwise it will work fine without it. Uh, so hopefully that, that answers that question. Now I'm absolutely filthy. I'm going to go and wash my hands. Any more questions, Helena? No, we've got some shout outs. Okay. Who have we got on with hangovers today? Uh, I don't know that anyone... Oh, Isabel, Come on, fess Isabel's up. Isabel's just tired. She huh? had a late night. Isabel's tired. She had Isabel... Giddings. Oh, where's Isabel Giddings? Hi, Isabel. How are you? Uh, um, but we've got uh, Cam from London. Hi, Cam. Patel. Oh, Cam Patel. Hi, Cam. I used to work with Cam at Atos, so hi, Cam. Uh, tea's on this morning. Morning, tea. I hear you've been doing some classic baking this week, doing our cakes, or doing a version of our cakes uh, without the barbecue, but good for you. Nigel. In Nigel in Northern Ireland, probably with Nicola as well, let's hope. Um, Nigel and Nicola are friends from Cambridge. Or I was at school with Nicola and I set Nigel and Nicola up and they got married. Uh, so. We also have another friend in Northern Ireland, I'm just trying to find his name. I think it was David. Another friend in Northern Ireland, David. Uh, maybe somebody, I sent something to Northern Ireland yesterday. I think somebody in Northern Ireland bought a, oh. uh, a, a thermo pen, uh, uh, no, a meter plus from me yesterday. Ed's mum, I don't know who, Wendy Turner, Ed's mum, do you know who that is? Wendy Turner, Ed Turner, Wendy. That will come to me in a minute. Maybe Ed from behind us, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, good fun. Right, let's have a look at this chicken. Let's see what's going on. So, um, Andy, take a quick look at this screen. Um, what it's showing us is it's roughly 19 minutes to go. The internal's 45. We're aiming at 74. It's not alarmed or anything. So what I'm gonna do is get in there now burp it, get in there, I'm going to flip it over. Um, so just flip it over um, just to brown up the skin side and we'll do that probably for the last 15 or so minutes and then flip it back. Um, ooh, smoky. Uh, the smoke is the fat from the chicken dripping into the charcoal. Um, because it's not uh, an indirect cook, because it is a direct cook, that fat's dripping it down into there. So in terms of the meter, I've got that pushed right into the thickest part of the breast, and that's the piece of that chicken that is gonna cook the slowest. Uh, when we're done, I will check it all with my thermopen as I always do, uh, to make sure it's all at the, uh, 74 above, um, but we'll do that towards the end. Okay, right. Um, what we will do now is go and make our dust. So we're going to do, let me get this out of the way for a minute. Can I pop that there, Helen? Yeah. Take those out of the way. So um, to go with our sweet corn, which we're going to put on in a minute, um, we're going to do a rub. Um, so nice and simple. We've got a mortar and pestle. Um, so I've got a couple of things here. So first of all, we've got uh, about half a teaspoon of uh, 
black peppercorns and half a teaspoon of molten salt. So I'm going to get them into my mortar and pestle and give those a bit of a grind just to break them up. Now we want to make this yeah, shake the table a bit. Okay, Jason has just said my stainless steel grid does not sit that high on my egg. Is, no. there, a problem, is there a problem when no. direct cooking? No, absolutely not. So mine is sitting that high because I've got it on the expander system. Uh, it makes it a lot easier when we're doing those videos for you to see it. Um, having it at the normal level, which is directly on the um, fire ring, uh, will be absolutely perfect. It will cook just as well. In fact, it will cook a little bit faster. So you're better off like that. I just set it up like that for TV or for this or whatever it is. Um, right, to go in there, I've got some chili flakes. Now you could just use normal red chili flakes. I'm using Chipotle chili flakes. So uh, these little bad boys, um, they've got a lovely smoky flavor to them. So barbecue -y. So we're gonna get some of those in there. And I've also got some um, of the sweet chili paprika that we used last week on the tapas one. So we'll put some of that in there. So just four ingredients on there, just something to give it that smoky flavor, that chili flavor, a bit of salt, and we'll get those. Just pound them up. It doesn't take long at all. There we go. All right, can you see that? all nicely pounded up there some big bits of chili in there don't worry about those what we're going to do is we're going to use a tea strainer and then we'll dust our sweet corn as we do it so uh, um, we'll come and grab those in a second so they're ready now i'm going to grab my sweet corn lovely and fresh from sainsbury's and we're going to get it in this egg so i'm going to open this up um, let's just show you what's going on in this pan. I can see steam coming out of it, so hopefully it's started to warm up enough that it's gonna start soaking that up. There you go, so it's started to boil, starting to get that, um, starting to get the rice cooked. So I put the lid back on, I'll push it back a tiny bit. We're gonna open these corn. Uh, we'll get them in here. In fact, let's put them on that way, they won't roll away then. and I'm going to put a drizzle of oil on them. I'm not going to put that dust on them yet. A little drizzle of oil and then we'll shut them down. Now I've got a bit of flame in there because we've had the lid open, there's a lot of oxygen and that's allowed that oil to catch fire. As soon as I shut the lid that will um, put it out so don't worry about that. You'll see a bit of smoke then, that's when the, the fire's been extinguished. Um, so we're, we're good on that. So we have chicken roasting over there or Co um, cooking, uh, grilling. We've got our rice getting ready. We've got our, uh, our um, uh, sweet corn on there. So, any big questions? Uh, no, what temperature was the rice? Uh, the rice is all at 180. Everything here is at 180 degrees. It's, you know, it's pretty much like putting it in an oven. Um, it's working fine. So, I think we've got time for this. Um, so someone has said, do you ever wrap the corn in foil? No, I don't. Um, I like to brown off the, the kernels. So you'll see they get a bit brown. I've already put the recipe up on the website. Um, so if you look at that, um, if you don't like that, then buy the corn on the cob whole um, in the husk. And the best way to do it, as I put on the recipe, uh, as I learned when I was in the States in Wisconsin uh, with a friend of mine, Brooke, um, the best way to do it is to soak the husks overnight in a bath or in a tub or in anything. Um, so soak the whole lot in water for 24 hours and then get your grill nice and hot, so 180, 200 degrees, and then take them out of the water and put them on with the husk still on. And what you do is you cook it and that water will steam the, the, the corn while the husk burns or the toast on the outside. And when it's like nice and nicely browned all the way around, take it off, uh, peel back the husk and you can use it as a handle. And then the really neat trick that I learned from the Americans is you get a paint, clean paint pot and fill it with butter. And then you just dip the whole lot in the butter and it's to die for. Um, so you've got that way. Right. So in here, I have a wok and it's probably difficult to see in the dark. I don't know. You, you, oh no, you can see that. And what I'm aiming for is a temperature of the oil about 180 degrees. And I'm not going to be far off. Cool. It's going to be pretty much bang on. 174, 175. Um, so what I'm going to do, pull that shut. I'm going to open it a little bit more. 
Now, if you looked at the temperature of the egg, because the heat is direct, the temperature of the egg is going to be a lot less. So this was down at 140 degrees down here. But because the wok is right next to the charcoal, it's heating up slightly hotter. Um, so um, I'm going to open it up a tiny bit just to bring up that temperature. I want, uh, want the, uh, the oil to be about 180 degrees. Because I'm going to cook some, can you get in there, Andy? Some skinny fries. So let me go and drain those off. Um, right, I'm going to let them drain for a minute. I don't want that water going in there because you don't want the, uh, the water. It's the water when it sinks below the oil and then and then boils and expands that causes the oil to overflow. Um, a lot of people have asked me about how safe it is to deep fry in an egg. Um, my take on it is it is the safest place to be doing it. Don't do it indoors unless you've got a proper deep pan uh, fryer. Um, on this, should I get a chip pan fire, shut the lid, pull the top shut, pull the bottom shut, you've starved it of oxygen, it will go out. And I know that works because I've done it. Um, I have burnt, you know, have overheated the oil to the point I just put it on one day and uh, totally forgot about it and uh, yeah came out and I had a chip pan fire so all I did um, there was smoke pouring out of it so I just pulled the lid shut pulled the bottom shut it went out uh, it was I think it was on the next egg over but anyway right so we'll open this nice and gently we're gonna put them in by the side there we go So how's that? Nando's chips as well. Well, sort of. <laughs> right, let's have a look at our sweet corn. So if you can back up a little bit, Andy. So I'm gonna open this. Now what we might find is they're not gonna brown much down at this height. So what I could do is, is lower the grill, as uh, Jason said, and put them on a lower height, or I could turn the heat up. Um, but they're gonna they're gonna cook nicely can you see if you look at this one i don't know how easy that is for you to see it's sort of a milky color there and it's like bright yellow here um i don't know if that comes out on the camera um but essentially as it's cooking those sugars are going to turn it a darker color so uh, and that's exactly what we're after um, so what i might do let's see if i can do this on the camera um i will set one of these grids a little bit lower so i'll just take this pan off for a sec Push all those over to one side. Just put those down there. Should have done it the other way around for the camera, but anyway, we'll pop that back on the top. And now these will cook nicely underneath. When we have a look, Andy can dive right in there. Um, you can show those, Andy. and they'll start cooking a little bit faster because they're nearer that heat. So I'll pull the lid shut. Put my pan in the way slightly. Hang on a sec. It's because I'm trying to balance it. It's just the handles on this lid. There we go. There we go. Just to confirm, you didn't part-boil the chips, did you? No, chips aren't part they're just going straight in. They're skinny chips. I'm not going to bother triple cooking them, double cooking them or any of that faff. I'm just going to do them as they are. They're only skinny. They're just, they are going to be what they are. Um, it's just a bit of fun. But if you want to do triple cooked chips, do triple cooked chips. Um, do big fat ones, you know, part boil them then, and, then, and then cook them at a lower temperature. So get your oil to about 150, cook them until they're cooked through, take them out, then get your oil hotter and then put them back in and you've got triple cooked chips. So let's have a look at our chicken. So I'm going to flip it back over. Should have got some nice colour on the top. There we go. Cooking through. Now, if we want to get it hotter, we could do. Um, so let me just uh, have a look at where we're at. So at 58, so we've got 13 minutes. So I might turn it back for a little bit and turn it up just a smidge, just to get a bit more brown on there. So all I'm going to do, open the top a little bit. 
there we go open the bottom a little bit back to my two fingers wide and that should go up just about 180 200 degrees and we'll get it nice and golden um, the, with the meter thermometers, if it gets too hot, it will alarm and warn us. Um, too hot for the meter itself, um, it will alarm and warn us. So uh, uh, no issue about cooking direct with those. Anything, it's, they'll go up to about 275 degrees before they warn you. And then it's a good idea to take them out. Um, perfect. All right, back in for our sweet corn. Give it a tumble. You're totally in the wrong place for you now, Andy, but there we go, starting to brown off a little bit. Just getting it that little bit close to the heat will brown them off nicely. So uh, we'll give those two or three minutes. Right, perfect time for questions. She says, as we've got none, so ask away. Um, I'm going to stir my chips. So we've used the wok, haven't we, to use the, the, um, Yeah, the chips are just cooking in the wok here, you can see. Um, if I want to turn the temperature up, I can. I can just turn it up a, a tad. Um, but at the moment, that oil is a little bit low, so we could turn it up, give it a bit more power underneath it. So it's down at 100, so yeah, just open it up a little bit, open it up a little bit, but just watch it. Okay. Um, so questions coming in. Uh, I'm going to grab my drink. Oh, beef short ribs, Jay, uh, Matt, Cooper. Matt Cooper. So Matt, yeah, beef short ribs, um, otherwise known as Jacob's Ladder, if you get them in a rack or a whole rack of them. Um, best way to cook them is in the rack rather than the individuals. Um, hopefully you've got them in a rack. Um, if you have, um, just mix 50% uh, salt, 50% pepper, um, and then uh, rub that onto your uh, meat. Uh, the way to make it stick is to use some horrible American French's mustard, smear it over the outside, you won't be able to taste it, but then um, put some rub on there sparingly um, and then cook them low and slow, so 110 degrees uh, centigrade, you want to cook them and they'll take about 10 hours. Um, as, they, uh, as with anything that's got connective tissue in, you're going to go through what's called the stall. So you'll see the internal temperature of the meat rise and then it'll begin to plateau or go into a stall. And it might sit there for a while before it starts to rise. What's happening at that point is the outside layers of the meat are drying out. And as it's drying out, it's ev that, that evaporation is cooling the rest of the meat. Um, and then once that outer layers have dried out enough, um, you get what's called a bark on the outside. So it's the black uh, or blackish color bark on the outside. Once you've got that, then um, you will uh, you could you could wrap them if you want to speed it up, but I, I don't bother. But what you need to do is wait until the temperature gets to above 92 degrees, and at that point the meat you'll feel it will go from being real really tough to breaking all that connective tissue in the meat. Uh, that will melt, it will moisturise the meat, and the meat will go really tender, uh, and that's what you're looking for. So um, give it time. Um, if you run out, don't be, um, don't be, don't go um, raising the temperature of your egg if you're running out of time. The best thing you can do is wrap it, uh, wrap it in either foil or butcher's, pink butcher's paper uh, that will let it breathe a little bit. But either way, wrap it uh, and let it get to that point where you can stick a, like a thermopen into it and it will just go in like butter. If it's not going in like butter, it's not cooked enough. You need to cook it longer. Oh, half a dozen questions. Good, because we've got lots of things cooking. So, okay, um, what's the difference between a half moon baking stone and a half moon plancher? Right, I can show you both of those. Um, half moon baking stone and half moon plancher. So, uh, I will get you to turn around, Andy. That is a rather grubby half moon baking stone. Well used. Well used. Well yeah, used. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's even well, more well used on the back. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, it's made of ceramic uh, and the point in having a ceramic is it doesn't transfer heat through it as, as readily as a piece of steel. So that's the half moon baking stone. That is the half moon cast iron plancher. Uh, even more grubby on the other side. It's all right, it was left out on my neighbour's trees. Um, drop a lot of seedy things on so that is the half moon plancher now that is made of cast iron and it will transfer the heat so um, that one is good for turning your egg half indirect 
this one is good for cooking things like sauteed potatoes, uh, steaks, I love steaks on the cast iron, anything like that. So those are the two of them. Um, similar sort of size, both equally as dirty as each other. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry actually, oh. It was actually a half moon ceramic plancher and baking stove. Um, so the half moon ceramic plancher is in that cupboard. I'm not going to go in there again. Old school, don't need it. Um, just buy the new half moon. Um, the half moon ceramic plancher's got sort of like a lip on the edge. Um, it was it came out before the expander system i wouldn't buy it anymore i'm probably going to get shot for that okay so can i'm going to wash my hands can you deep fry in a dutch oven yes why not yeah absolutely can you deep fry in a dutch oven absolutely um yeah no reason why not okay i think we've said chicken just keep the level of the oil to about a third of the pan so that way you'll never boil it over it's when people boil it over that um uh, you get run into the issues. So yeah, keep about a third of the pan at the most with oil and then put whatever you're going to cook in. Try not to get it too near the top. Okay, when... and I think it was that the chicken was cooked direct? The chicken is cooking direct. Excellent. So Here we someone, go. someone is doing a pork shoulder tomorrow. They said they need fresh shoulder potatoes. Lovely. Um, and should they leave the bone in or not? And do they need the roasted pan or grid? So, Pork shoulder, fat on, uh, fat on or not, or skin on. Anyway, should that, but basically a pork shoulder or what's called a pork butt by the Americans because it comes from the front no, leg of the animal. Fat on. Um, so do lay, leave a little bit of fat on there. You hear these birds? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Leave some of the fat on there. Put some rub around the outside. You want some moisturisation on there. Um, leave the bone in. Much better bone in pork shoulder. Um, but it is going to take you a lot longer than you think. If it's three kilos or above, it could take anything up to 19 hours to cook at 110 degrees. So you might want to put it on this afternoon if you want to eat it tomorrow afternoon. Um, go to the pork, pull pork recipe on my website. Um, don't worry about the brining bit or the rubbing a day before. That's, you know, that's just to make it even better. Um, but um, just have a look at that and also read the, one, the recipe on the brisket because it talks to you about the, um, the, the, uh, the plateau, the stall, um, some standing in the smoke, Andy, but um, it talks to you about that and uh, it, you'll get, learn a bit of theory about how that's gonna cook. Um, if you get up tomorrow morning and you put your pork shoulder on it and it's a three kilo pork shoulder, um, it won't be pulled pork when you eat it in the evening and it won't be nice. Um, you need to cook it much longer. Well, you can, you can put it in a, a drip pan um, or you can just let the, it all drip onto the, onto the grid. No problem with that at all. Yeah, any more? Okay. Sweet corn, go on. With a normal stainless steel grid with a large egg oh, fit the expander. Will the normal stainless steel for the large egg fit the expander? Yes, it will. Uh, the, uh, the grids are designed to go through, the, the handles are designed to go through the grid. So yes, you can use it. So then you can use the two half, if you buy the five piece kit, you can use the two half stainless steels at a lower level and then use it at this level. Um, so yes, you can use it with that. Okay, so. But it um, won't go down below, it'll only go at that level. So another Nick has just got his egg. Yeah. He wasn't expecting two yours at the bottom. A mesh door and a solid one. Looks like you just moved both doors together. Yes, um, I am lazy, so there are two doors here. Um, Big Green Egg has these, some of the other manufacturers don't do them. Um, the idea is that this, you can leave, the mesh you can leave there, so should anything fall out, it will be caught and won't burn your table or your decking. Um, you'll see what I do, I normally put a um, cast, uh, sorry, a, a ceramic plate there, so if anything falls out, it goes on that and doesn't burn my tables but I think last week I showed you, I have burnt my tables before. Um, but yeah, if it's a windy day, use the mesh, it will stop things falling out. Um, especially if you've got decking, the last thing you want to do is have anything falling out of your egg onto decking and setting fire to your decking. Um, I have seen pictures of people who've done that. Um, not pretty, especially if you leave it unattended overnight. Uh, so someone else has asked about suggestions for belly pork, how to cook it. Belly pork most popular recipe on my website. Um, so, 
um, belly pork, I always uh, leave it in the fridge overnight. Uh, the purpose of that is to let the skin dry, leave it uncovered, the skin will dry out. Um, then give it a good score, use a Stanley knife, don't use a kitchen knife. Go and buy yourself a craft Stanley knife, so much easier, so much safer. You can give it a good score um, and then cook it fat side, um, skin side down. Uh, lots of mold and salt and oil onto the skin before it goes on. Put it fat side down and the heat radiating up through the um, convector will uh, cook the skin while the rest of it cooks really slowly. I normally cook it for about eight hours at 110 degrees. Um, that is enough to break down the connective tissue. It all goes really soft and gooey and lovely and the skin will crackle. If it hasn't crackled, 100, uh, sorry, 220 degrees right at the end, just turn it up 220 degrees for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Watch it like a hawk. It will go from not crackled to black really quickly. Um, but that's how to get the perfect um, pork belly cooked whole. Um, you can leave the ribs in or not. Um, if you want to take the ribs out, um, you'll find they're, they're, they're sort of like a wedge shape. Just get cut down, uh, down them and then underneath them and then you've got yourself a rack of ribs as well as a pork belly. So if you get them bone in, you've got two bits of meat then. Um, yeah. Right, let's have a look at this, this rice. Now, I had a look on, it's a while since I've been to Nando's, um, but I had a look online and that's looking all right to me. Um, a lot of people seem to put peas in it. Um, I don't remember Nando's having peas in it, but it, I have to confess, um, oh, that's lovely. It is a long time since I've been to Nando's. Um, so um, I haven't got peas in it, but if you want to put peas in it, now's the time to put peas in it and it'd be lovely. Right, I'm gonna shut that, let that get a bit of smoke in there. Um, you can see these corn are doing beautifully now. In fact, I might move them up just so you can see. Uh, well, we'll do them down there. I'm gonna give them that dust. So I'm moving off to the side so I don't cook them anymore. Too much more. I'm gonna get my... Yeah, I'll do it in a minute. Give me twenty past 12. Yeah. Oh, we're a bit late, are we, today? Mm. So I'm just gonna give these a dust. And we're nearly done. Right, two minutes and we're done. Let's have a look at our chicken. Two minutes remaining on our chicken. If you have a look, it's already moaned about five minutes from the end. So that's 69 and that will take it out. And then as we rest it, it'll be, it will bring it up to 74 degrees. So we're nearly ready to plate up. Um, let's have a look at our chips. Little bit more to go on those. Starting to starting to crisp up, they're getting nice and soft. So a little bit more. And we'll have fries as well. So I'm gonna turn out a tiny bit now. Cool. Any more questions, Helena? Can you recommend alternatives to big green egg charcoal? Alternatives, big green egg charcoal's back in stock by the way, so if you want some you can get it from Big Green Egg at the moment. Um, uh, alternatives, we've covered this previous weeks, um, but people like Oxford Charcoal, uh, Whittle and Flame, who are the guys, Matt, who used to be at Oxford Charcoal, brilliant people. Um, uh, Green Olive uh, Company down in, uh, in the South Coast. Um, Stag from Hertfordshire, another Matt, Matt Edmonds. Um, those are the ones that tend to uh, recommend I'll move around Andy because you're looking directly into the sun. Um, uh, those I recommend, um, I try and avoid things like Big K and those others, they just, I just don't like them personally. Um, but try them, see what you like. Um, but anything restaurant grade. Um, I haven't tried the Kamado Joe Big Block stuff. Um, that's another opportunity. I don't know how, if they've got stock. Most charcoal suppliers at the moment are out of stock. Um, they just had an absolute run on people buying big green eggs uh, and, and the like this year. So um, yeah, a lot of charcoal suppliers were out of stock. Big green egg, I've got very limited supply. Uh, it's coming in, but it is limited. So now I just, I just heard my chicken beep, so I'm gonna get my chicken off. Have you used the London Log Company charcoal? I haven't used Mark. Mark Parr at the London Log Chum, uh, Company. No, I haven't used his. 
Uh, I know Mark well, uh, I've cooked for Mark a couple of times. Um, no, I haven't used their stuff. Uh, should do, really. Um, anyway, so um, if you look at this, Andy, it's saying remove, there, it was alarming, I've got it turned down low. <coughs> Reflection on oh, there. Okay, yeah, well, it's, it it's basically saying, yeah, you might not be able to see it. It's basically saying time to get it off. Uh, it's now gone to resting, so I'm gonna get it off. Try and do this and take it over to that clean block. There we go, without losing a leg. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring a plate. What will happen if I don't do that? In fact, let's do what we should do. Probe it, 86 on the legs. We're good to go. There's nothing in there less than is showing down that screen. I've got that pretty much in the thickest part of the meat. So I'm happy that while that rests, whoops, it will continue to cook. Or oh, finish cooking. Uh, so the range on the meter, um, I'm using the meter block, it's Wi-Fi, so as long as it's connected to your Wi-Fi, you can connect to it uh, from anywhere with an internet connection anywhere in the world. Um, so pretty far away. Um, the meter plus is Bluetooth, their claimed range on it is up to 155 feet. Um, so from, for me, I can get a signal in my kitchen, which is way down there. Um, some people seem to have, have less range than that, but it works for me. Um, what you can do is use a tablet or a phone that's connected to Wi-Fi to put the signal on Wi-Fi and then you can connect to it. Um, uh, so, so, does the block need to be close to the head? Uh, the block needs to be within Bluetooth distance, Bluetooth range of the probe. So I'm using, there's one there, um, but there's three more in here I could use these, so I can use this for that other chicken which we'll throw on in a minute. Right, let's uh, get everything off, serve up a little bit, um, because we're running over a little bit today. So let me grab some bits. So I'll do one plate full and then we'll... Uh... Right. So we have some corn. Whoop. You watch me lose it. Some of my Nando's rice, which is just starting to go crusty on the bottom, which is the way I like it. Can you see that? bit like when you get paella you want those crusty bits um, so that's just spot on to come off that so we'll get that we've got some chicken over here so if I pop it up on this block so I'm gonna grab it um, I'll just take a leg so let's uh, get underneath in fact I need to wash that hang on so it's just wiping on the underside but it's hot so it will cook Right, so I can just take a leg straight off. So there's one for Helena, because she's a leg person. I was uh, going to my mum. Oh, what are they taking this one? This is our lunch. <laughs> so legs off, um, I'll take the probe out now. So that's the one that's been in there, it's quite warm. Um, and then we can, to, to do this, if you had it in halves, you could just go for it, but I can just come down the, uh, the bone at the side. In fact, I'm just gonna cut it clean in half like Nando's would. Uh, we'll get that one on there and you'll see that's cooked beautifully um, but there's one nando's lunch and um i will grab the chips in a second let me just wipe my hands oh meant to be So any more questions, Helena, while we're... No, but you might want to tell people what we're doing next week. Oh, next week, yes. So we've sort of come up with a plan. Um, you might want to come over a bit closer, Andy, uh, just so they can hear me. Um, so we've sort of come up with a plan for next week. Um, we keep getting asked for all these low and slow cooks. Um, and while they're, they're impossible to do um, in 45 minutes an hour, so what I thought I'd do is next week we will do burgers. So we'll cook the buns and some burgers and we'll do kebabs and we'll do brisket kebabs. And I will cook the brisket during the week, video it, show you how it's done, talk you all the way through it. 
so that you can watch the whole of that in your own uh, in your own time um, because it's pretty boring to watch 15 hours of brisket cooking it's not very exciting um, so we'll do that and then we'll use that brisket and we'll do some flatbreads and we'll do some flatbread brisket kebabs so kebabs and burgers next week uh two two in one and i think that should be a bit should be cracking right um let's take these over so how are they looking a few nice chips mm -hmm. yeah we'll get some of those on with our i'm gonna do these with the i'll do them with a spoon but i haven't put any salt on them yet but oh drop it on my phone case there you go i'm gonna eat one Oh, stunning. So, Nando's. So, I hope you've enjoyed this week. Run over a little bit, a little bit longer than normal. Um, but, yeah, good fun. Um, if you've got any questions at all, um, just give me a call. Numbers on the website, contact forms on the website. Uh, or email me, nick, N-I-C, at meatsmokefire.co.uk. Watch us on YouTube. This video will go on YouTube. So, watch us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Like us on Instagram, we obviously have because you're already here. What else is there to say? Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week. We'll go and enjoy our Nando's lunch. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Uh, and